Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, before we get started, just mention that the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT NoGov license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. All right, so this week, Danilo has left us yet again. Always off doing fun things, apparently. Um, but uh, we are joined by Donnie. Uh, one of the co-hosts of our Force to Freedom podcast, and uh, we're going to discuss effective ways to bring the message of liberty to members of the military. And Donnie, as a, a former member, uh, has some ideas about this, and uh, maybe point us in a direction of, of not beating them over the head and calling them names, as so many of us are prone to do, uh, myself included. <laughs> uh, if we really want to win them over, maybe... Uh, I never maybe do that. <laughs> of course not, Dave. <laughs> um, but may maybe we should maybe we should figure out some uh, better, more effective methods. So uh, hopefully, uh, somebody from the formerly from the inside can uh, help us shed some light on that. So, so, uh, so, Donnie, give us a little rundown of uh, your military experience for all those who haven't heard. Um, just a short little thing: what battalion you were in, and the last thing, and everything. So nobody's like, "Oh, this guy don't know what the hell he's talking about." Uh, the last place I was at was on Fort Hood. The uh, 504th MI. Okay. So all the combat people just lost their minds, like, "Oh, he's some rogue." So, uh, yeah, not not a big deal. Um, I was in for 19 years. Uh, 17 years was uh, active duty. Uh, a couple of years in the National Guard. Uh, six of that was Navy. The rest of it was Army. And uh, I was uh, I couple of MOS's I finished up is a uh, military intelligence which sounds like a Nazi moron and pretty much is <laughs> but but some uh, critical thinking skills are taught in the in the MOS and that was pretty much the downfall for me because up until then I was kind of a constitutionalist believer type and then they taught me critical thinking skills as part of my job and uh, you know I tell you don't just get rid of your biases and don't make assumptions and get to the root of the, the problems and you know put things together and that doesn't really work if you actually do that and you, you listen to their guidance um, you will not really approve of the military in pretty short order let's say it was about two years before I would from from the time I became an analyst to well, maybe three from the time I became an analyst to the time I became an anarchist it was about three years so uh, it took a little little time to marinate. You know, one of the years was deployed, so I was just so so busy. I didn't really have time to think much about it. But, but yeah, if if anybody's doing the analyst thing right, you will start questioning other things. You know, the things you were told never to question. But it kind of rolls like that. Yeah, that's always shocked me. You know, when someone says, "Hey, don't question this." Like, you can go into any room in this house except for that door right there. I'll go through that door. It's like, well, where the fuck do you think I'm gonna go now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Must be the most interesting room in the house. It has. Yeah, to be. it's full of, of dead bodies and guns. Yep. <laughs> always the dead bodies with you. They, they've always. I'm they've... just, uh, you know, I, I listen to <laughs> Drowning Pool way too much. Dave's a very, <laughs> Dave's, Dave's a very morbid individual. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, yeah. so. that that's a, that goes over pretty well in the military. We, we end up with a morbid sense of humor by the time it's over. So yeah. Too many right. years on the internet has made me just immune. <laughs> All right, so uh, maybe we'll we'll give the floor to you, Donnie, since uh, you obviously have more experience at us at this than we do, <laughs> and and you have some ideas, I believe. So uh, okay, why don't you so, uh, tell us what we're doing wrong, basically? <laughs> well, it's not necessarily a matter of right and wrong. It's you, you kind of have to uh, size up your audience and understand who you're talking to. It's, it's much different to talk to somebody who's in the military than say a uh, four-year liberal arts degree from UC Berkeley. They're, your target audience is so different that um, approaches to somebody who's in the military are going to be, they're not going to be the same. They're not going to be the same. They're different. And just kind of understanding that is, is I think is a really big part. There's a, a so thing. So you're saying more eggshells or less? Different eggshells. Okay. Not right. more, not less, just different. Um, I think you can find now. Now everything I'm about to say really is about somewhat stereotypical. Okay. And that the stereotypical typical military type. You can find uh, liberals in the military. 
they're rare, but you can find them because that demographic is very not uh, susceptible to the Democratic vote for a lot of reasons, you know, but you don't find too many, but you do find them. So you really still have to size up who you're talking to. But I will submit that no matter who you're talking to, walking up to them, if you're if you're talking to the liberal arts degree from UC Berkeley and starting off the conversation is, hey, goddamn hippie, you need to listen to what I'm telling you. You're probably not going nowhere at the same for the same. Right. So the same reason uh, walking up to a military guy and telling him he's a he's a goddamn baby killing welfare whore is probably not your best approach. This is um, a lot of the anarchist community looks into empathy and understanding the problem as opposed to just coming up with some top down authoritarian idea. Well, use that even though these are military people and, and empathy isn't necessarily important to them, it's important to you. So, so you understand who you're talking to is probably, probably so, like right off the bat. Now, because you don't find too many lefties, what do you really find? The vast majority of the military, it doesn't matter which branch you're in, you're probably looking at some shade of Republican. And in recent years, you're probably looking at more of a uh, constitutionalist type. So, neocons? Uh, you might, sure, you'll find some of them, but a lot of them, I, I mean, you, you find neocon, neocon tends to be either uh, an uneducated Republican or somebody who's just, you know, batshit crazy. Or really, usually, really high up ranking. <laughs> exactly. But, but, the, but those are, those are Kool-Aid drinking. You're never getting them on the bandwagon. Just move on. You can get ignorant people by being courteous to them. I mean, it just, just very simple, basic things. And then uh, you'll find a lot, you know, the constitutionalist type, more and more of those in the Republican Party, even just never mind military. You'll find more and more constitutionalist types these days than you would find 10, 20 years ago. So um, you'll find libertarians, a good chunk of libertarians in the military. Not, uh, not uh, Big L, Big L, let's not... Let's not confuse the methodology because, again, we're still talking. I, all of us at one point were status, and all of us at one point were ignorant. So let's not immediately start off with "I'm better than you" because there's a lot of. Oh, I got a, a little. This is not a plug, but um, if we were to say uh, you want to look at a certain idea, um, you would listen to Bob Murphy for say a. Uh, a good anarchist view on what does private prisons, private uh, defense look like. He's an economist, he's really smart, he's got some really good things to say about it. If you wanted to listen to a uh, peaceful parenting kind of libertarian thing, you would be looking at Stefan Molyneux. Well, if you want to look at use of force, the only guy in the market doing it is Christopher Cantwell. I think he, he's above average intelligence, he's kind of a one-trick pony. A lot of his arguments are based around this flaming you're a baby killer, you're a welfare whore, this in-your-face aggressive libertarian. Whether that's real or whether that's his online persona, whatever, I don't fucking care. The only argument, I mean, if you want to listen to, uh, you know, the Stockholm Syndrome kind of statist, you listen to Larkin Rose. He's the guy who does that segment. The only thing that Cantwell really does is the use of force. And he does, makes a very good use of force argument. If you listen to his stuff, oh yes, it's okay to kill somebody for stealing a paperclip. However, <laughs> asterisk, comma, yes, you have the right to do that, but does anybody want to deal with you? And for some reason, he makes all of these arguments that I would never recommend this presentation to somebody, except the one thing he's really good at, and that's the use of force argument. So don't be Christopher Cantwell. Don't be <laughs> the guy who's, who's trying to put liberty, you know, here's, here's one blast of liberty shot. No, 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 no. Put the shotgun down. And, uh, and bring look at these people for who they are constitutionalists and libertarians big l libertarians they're very much already where we are they're close they're they're not, they maybe they're there for the wrong reasons who the fuck cares are you a recruiter or do you want to be the smartest asshole in the room you have that what's that that page you made it was lava it was libertarian anarchist voluntarist and i don't know what the last one is but i'm going to tack on asshole Okay, because that's who you have. You have the libertarians and the anarchists and the voluntarists, and then you have the fucking assholes. They're not helping anybody. 
They just want, they want to be contrarian. So I'm going to tell you guys, if you're listening, if you're one of those people and you want to be a contrarian, go start supporting bestiality, okay? Because I don't <laughs> care what pig you're fucking, unless that pig is in the NYPD, and then I want you to fucking recruit him, okay? We need to recruit people into this ideal, not, not fucking send them reeling into the hills because they met one asshole who decided to give them the liberty shot right in the mouth. Nobody needs liberty shot. Put the liberty shot down. Yeah, that's that's hard to get over. I went I went through that I went through that phase where I had <laughs> everything was rapid fire and I had to I had to just smack people over the head with it. Yeah. Um, if, I mean I we've I think we've talked about it before, but you, you you tend to find this in the in the newer converts themselves that you yep. know because you have all that pent up rage. At least I mean I'll speak for myself. You know at least for me I had this pent up rage where I was mad at myself for yep. not learning, not figuring oh. it out earlier because I, you know, I'm, I'm 38. I, I kind of, I kind of think that I came to this pretty late to the party cause I didn't start figuring things out to like, you know, right before my kids were born and I didn't put it all together until just after they were born. I call it, I call it, um, I call it Paul Revere running through a village of deaf people syndrome. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm 37 and I spent 19 years in the military. So you want to talk about the pent up rage when you realize that you've been suckered. I'm not yeah. bitter about it, but God damn, am I motivated? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So sometimes the motivation will come across as, you know, like a little too strong and stuff like that. So uh, be a good, uh, a bearer of, uh, <laughs> there I use the, the, the Christian, be a good witness. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't don't you know as as Dave, <laughs> Dave coined a really good phrase and I like it plant a seed don't start a fire yeah so the thing about the military people is you are not going to convince them in one day so the uh, I, I would suggest that the best way to start rolling with this is you evaluate your target some people are very libertarian. They're, they're Ron Paul converts. They're already most of the way here. The last thing you want to do is scare this guy off. The last thing you want to do. He's, what did it take for you? What did it take for me? Everybody comes a little bit different, but it, usually it was somebody was lighting a path that I'd never traveled before. Hey, let, what's down here? Let me explore this. Let me think about this. So evaluate. If this person is extremely hostile uh, for whatever reason, don't don't push the issue. Start bringing them on board. Um, the, the first thing I, I, I say is I, I got a little outline here, and that is buy them a beer and start up a rapport with this person. Even if you don't do anything today or tomorrow, this is an ally. These people, as a rule, they're very honest. They're very consistent. They're principled far more than most anarchists. They are now granted they they don't understand that they're believers as opposed to working with some sort of really strong ideas right they're they're working with what they believe what they've grown up with but they will die and kill for it these are not bad people they're misguided people and we, I was one of them so um, just throwing them under the bus doesn't work start off slow if, if somebody's really hostile don't even bother just buy them a beer hang out enjoy the company um, usually it's good you know there's exceptions every rule but uh, start off that report Beer is a it's, a, it's a cultural thing in the military. Alcohol is the lubricant. It just is the way it is. <laughs> Buy them a beer. Hang out. Relax. And then when you do start engaging these people, don't talk military. You're out of your fucking element. You don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I mean, even if you were in like me, I can do it. But And, and I don't want to say it's a plea to authority. It's I know things that you don't because of that situation. That's all. So... Don't try and talk on their terms because you're going to lose. Hmm. You're going to lose, and that and that could just cause more friction. But you can talk about general <clears throat> things, philosophic, uh, philosophy, logic, and economics. You can talk these things because they're not confrontational. And a lot of the people, hey, you know, oh, so so the guy says, um, I don't like them illegal immigrants, and you say, why? I'm like, well, they're taking our jobs. Well, that's a really good point to pick up in economics and say, well, here's the problem with the law of supply and demand and, and why, you know, American labor is overvalued right now. And because of all of these things, and you talk about, you know, the regulatory state and the minimum wage and how all these things start start factoring in to, you know, and the welfare state, too. You know, I, I mean, there's just so many ways you can you can engage that, but you're not engaging this military guy on, hey, you know, the military is not such a good thing because that's going to cause people to be defensive and 
it's it's essentially you're never you're not never, talking to the you, elephant <laughs> right you're right for those of you who don't know what talking to the elephant is there's a there's an analogy that uh, each person is an elephant with a rider and the rider is that person's intellect and the elephant is their emotions so if you're talking to the elephant even if the rider wants the elephant to go east you're talking to the elephant and say go west young man go west it's probably going to go west so mm -hmm. instead of getting this person you know engaged in emotionally in an argument you're just talking you're having a really intelligent discussion with somebody who's re who's most likely really interested so interested in how the country's doing that they will in their view they will wake up every day and they'll do something about it and that, that's a really really positive kind of person as a rule I, I'm not gonna say there's not lunatics and there's not lefties and there's not I mean you you're really not going to find a communist in the military. You're not going to find a hardcore socialist in the military. You're just really not. Well, it, it's highly unlikely. It's not not like one that statistical improbability. Not one that doesn't realize that that's what they are. But I get <laughs> I get what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that's the point. Avoid that. Stay away from that. Control that impulse. Don't don't get snarky <laughs> with it. There's a day for that, and the day for that is going to be when they come to you and say, "Hey, I just realized." that our entire system there you know we think we live in the capital system we think we have a free market but this is how many talks down the road right mm. it's not the first ones it's not the second ones well another thing i would inject and this goes for everything regardless of military or job status or anything is don't lecture you know you, you watch a debate between someone who's for and against abortion all right and just watch it neither one of them are asking questions they're just lecturing at each other I'm going to say a bunch yep. of words. You're going to ignore those words. I'm going to say a bunch of words back to you. I'm going to ignore those words. It, that, you're not getting anywhere when you, uh, the brain activity from when you ask someone a question versus when you tell someone something is something completely, it, it, the brain lights up because they right. are engaged. They have to think. Right. Well, I think a lot of people, especially libertarian, anarchists, the volunteers, they get into this, this idea that every cop, and every military, every you know, soldier, marine, whatever, they're all bad. And and while I understand the philosophy behind it, when you actually break it down, there's people here. And a lot of them, whether you recognize it or not, whether you want to believe me or not, they're a lot like us. They really a lot of them really do care about liberty. They've accepted fallacies along the way. They've accepted that, oh well, you have to have a government. It, that, oh, government is a prerequisite for civilization, instead of recognizing that it's the other way around. And then as soon as you, you know, have the government, you take the civil out of civilization, just end up with a nation, and, and God knows where that ends up. So, I mean, ha most of the time it ends up in a mass grave, but people aren't taught this. They don't understand it. And I think the most important takeaway from this whole thing is that a lot of people in the military are very, very open to these ideas. Not open when you walk up and say, hi, I'm an anarchist. You should be one, too. Hmm. Nope. That's not going to work. That's absolutely not going to work. But if you walk these people down that path, they very are, they, they're, they, as a rule, a lot of people in the military, they're honest. They will fight. They will fight for the things. They are serious people who will fight for the things they believe in. Not, I, I don't have a problem with the, the whole agorist thing, but agorist seems to be the introvert of liberty, where you, you bring it all into yourself and just don't participate with those things that you don't appreciate. Whereas the activist is more of the extrovert. They're trying to say, hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking. And they kind of get out there and they spread it around. And these people are living extroverts. They will go to other continents and place themselves in harm's way. And only the very rarest of them will enjoy killing anybody. But they will place themselves in the harm's way based on principle. Now, whether or not they're willing to change their principles, like I said, you find the occasional lefty unicorn. And then you find some neocons that are just, you know, off their cracker. But then you find a lot of libertarian constitutionalist people who can be swayed by intelligent argument, and they are tremendous, tremendous allies to have in that team, on the team, bringing them over. So keeping it not hostile, trying to discuss the overall philosophy, trying to keep it logically consistent. And then when those weird things come in, I have yet to really engage in a topic where philosophy, logic, or economics cannot make a coherent understanding of a situation i i have i have yet to find one well yeah sophistry is not sophistry is only going to invoke emotional responses and so when you walk up and you just start spouting out stuff even if it's true 
even if the the the, the, the bromides or whatever you're <clears throat> that you're saying is true, it's not going to help you. I I don't even know what a bromide is other than <laughs> chemical chemical bromide. Uh, is chemical. Look it up when you get a chance. <laughs> Uh, I, I, th I think I think Dave's got a hold of that toilet paper again, and it's just <laughs> bromide so, is is uh, basically another word for sophistry or casuistry. So, so if you're one of those people out there that managed to somehow at the age of you know 15 or 16 before you ever got your first job and you somehow became a libertarian or an anarchist, uh, great, great. But I think you have to understand that you are a rarity. You are very rare. Most people have a status upbringing. That's the way it is. So, um, www.logicalfallacies.info. It's a really good uh, site for, and, and don't think, oh, that sounds like fallacious reasoning, therefore it is. I mean, there are a lot of fallacies. That, I mean, literally, some of them are so subtle between one and the other, it's very different, sometimes to tell, difficult to tell the difference between the two. And start debunking these fallacies. With, with your friends, one at a time. If you got, you know, like I'm saying, military people, one at a time. These are really good people. They're very much into being honest. Honesty really is kind of the, the crux of what we do. Instead of continuing to be a status and live the lie, we, oh, well, I'm not going to live a bandwagon fallacy because that's just bullshit, and I am not bullshit. So, I mean, a lot of the core of this is honesty, and a lot of, you know, I know it's all, they're all baby killers. And they're all welfare. They're not all baby killers and welfare whores. Some of them are just misguided. I spent two goddamn decades of misguided. And it doesn't mean I won't pick up a weapon and shoot somebody. It means I'll do it defensively, not offensively. I will do it in defense of myself or another. I will not do it to collect bills for the Department of Offense anymore. So, so I was wrong. But it's very difficult. See, I, I was fortunate. I got shot at, but I didn't have to kill anybody. So there's some guy out there who really, really wants to be honest with himself as just as much as anyone else, but maybe he's taken a life and he's not ready to get over that yet. He's not ready to come to this side and say, you know what, I done fucked up, and that's okay. He will come in his time. He will come on his dime. Not You're not going to make anybody, but you can be empathetic. Buy him a beer. Talk these things, and when you see that you've rubbed somebody just a little too deep let it let it go let it go pressing the issue is not going to not going to be a win for you that person is is probably going to have to not just justify a logical fallacy but an action that that, that they didn't really particularly care for at the time hmm. let alone are going to have to now reconcile where they look at themselves in the mirror and say I went to somebody else's country I thought I was fighting freedom instead I was spreading tyranny and I kill somebody for it. That's going to be on their time. You're never ever going to force that force that in their head. So just let it go. It doesn't mean that this person doesn't come around. And I, I know some people, and they're like, I I can't undo it. I can't undo it. All I could do is make sure I never do it again, and make sure nobody else that that I get to talk to does that again. And I can try to spread that message. And that's, but they have to come to that on their own. So, it's a, it's well, pride is uh, no no it's more than pride right? well there's there's swallowing pride and then there's accepting that you've taken a life a whole different thing whole different thing well in in most situations i i would i would i would agree with you that you know it's you know everybody because i i mean i've said this before you know everybody has to come this to this in their own on their own terms you can't really force mm -hmm. people into this but i, I would ask you this you know when it comes to uh in terms of people that have been in the military um you know it's all well and good to say yeah you you have to let them you know as a as a general rule have to let them come to it but i would think and obviously you would know better than i i, I would assume what you know the numbers that we hear that you know 22 23 veterans are, are, are committing suicide a day which that just i mean that number always has always seemed astronomical to me like how like how many people is that in a year like how many people have been in the military like i mean if, if those numbers are accurate even if it's less than that would a lot of i would think just th that a lot of them had these thoughts and ha and had these realizations and that's why it, it, it devoured them 
wouldn't one, one wouldn't it behoove say. us to to try to to try to reach out even harder to these people so they don't end up or 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 do you think or do you think they're two separate classes here the people that and uh there i don't think if somebody is i i don't know where that 22 000, that 22 a day yeah, number came I'm, from and i <laughs> broke the, i broke the numbers down on that most and, of them vietnam vets right and and that's what what a lot of people don't understand like if you were to look at that as in the current population of the military, mm -hmm. um, that really doesn't make sense. But when you start looking at a lot of Vietnam vets and people who were in back in the 80s, um, really, like, it, it's vets. It's any vet who's alive. Even then, the number seems a little high. The, the thing I can't speak to is, okay, so I was in a brigade, right? And I would know if the numbers were that high. When I was in Iraq... Uh, in 2011, one guy committed suicide while we were in Iraq out of 5,000. Mm. So, just break, I, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, I really didn't see that one coming. Um, <laughs> but I broke it down, and it would be every brigade in the military would see, I want to say it was like seven or eight suicides a month for those numbers to make sense if it was just the active duty guys, right? Mm -hmm. So, it yeah, just, I, I broke those numbers down so that it was I, I, I cornered out the mili I cornered out the army from the total numbers and then I cornered out how many brigades there were at the time and how many suicides happened in a brigade and the number I want to say was between five and eight a month it, it's been a while since I ran that that whole problem the point is my brigade was not having five suicides a month and even if they were weird um, you would still he I mean this would be a massive nightmare. So I want to say that a lot of those things are really more being kind of reported by maybe the VA or something okay. like that. Because I can tell you, it wasn't active duty, guys. And why people are committing suicide, I, I really couldn't tell you that it was this waking up and this realization. I mean, is that. it keeping along lines with, with uh, national averages? That's always been my question. I mean, because if it's running parallel to the people that commit suicide per 100,000 people, if it's running parallel or even a little bit higher, because... You know, it's a lot to imagine what you would see in Vietnam or Korea. <laughs> it really is. This is a good place to have that understanding of how nebulous economics is. And I will give you the example of the motorcycle safety uh, courses that the military runs for motorcycle people. There, there is a higher, higher correlation of people dying on motorcycles in the age bracket of people in the military versus not. But do you know why? because military people make more money and they can afford motorcycles as opposed to the average mm. college student of that age who cannot afford a motorcycle. So uh, it, anything can throw off those kind of statistical things. And honestly, when I hear a statistic these days, I'm like, man, like I, <laughs> the first thing is skepticism. Like what, what data was used to do that? What questions were asked to get that data? I mean, I, I really just don't even believe statistics anymore. And 22 a day seems Astronomical. Well, you know, no, I know. That's, you know, one hundred percent of all gun owners die, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, one hundred percent of uh, of people who drink water die. Exactly. So, ban dihydrogen all, oxide. Ban all the things. <laughs> right. Um, so, sorry, I guess, I'm down, guys. I'm sick as hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, I guess the last portion that I'll get into before I kind of kick it back to you guys is. Uh, stay away from the Constitution, stay away from the flag, stay away from war topics. Not to say that these are invalid topics or they don't need to be addressed until you have a deep rapport with somebody where you can speak to them frankly, you're not going to be able to say that all of these wars were a lie and you should accept it because they went to them. I went to them and I was blessed by never having to kill anybody. I, I it's, It might sound weird, I'm so glad that I got the artillery and the, and the rounds that I got shot at me as opposed to putting them out. I'm so glad now mm -hmm. because I don't have to, I don't have to live, relive certain things. I don't have to know. I know that I was not the direct cause of anybody's death and maybe an indirect one. It's, I'm not rationalizing. I'm saying, I just know I didn't end somebody. So I'm fortunate with that. The flag, I mean, there, yeah, there's the a flag difference has between... been over the caskets of their friends. Don't, don't. It's not worth the argument. When they come to the realization that all flags are stupid, let them come to that. Don't, don't you bring it up. Don't you bring it up. And the Constitution is a big kind of part of the deal where a lot of people really think 
that the Constitution will save us. Never mind that it set the mechanics in place that caused all these problems, or at least didn't prevent it, and I like to say both. Hmm. But uh, but uh, these things are kind of hot button things. Don't bother. Don't bother. You're out of your element. You could personally refer every single goddamn one of them to me, and I will work through the list as I get them. I will take the time and do it. I've been there. You haven't. That plea to authority <clears throat> may be something that they never get over. It, literally, you may, Dave may never be able to engage John. But John will listen to me every single word and hang on it just because that's his personal thing. And is it, you know, is it philosophically sound? No, it's not. No, it's not. But just get over it. Recognize you're dealing with people. They're not all the same. And a lot of them are good ones. They really, really are. So it, I kind of, um, I kind of, been, I've, I've changed my approach, especially when talking to ex-military. Uh, I don't. Talk, you don't meet much ex-cops that are yeah. will talk about anything. Yeah. Um, but uh, my my general approach is is a lot different. I mean, what what's done on social media is is something completely done different than what's done in what I do in real life. Um. So I mean, I normally I just like you said, I try to keep it towards economics and 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 philosophy and and just staying away from stuff that i know is gonna their eyes are gonna glaze over the 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 the, the indoctrination is gonna snap in and take control yeah. so uh, when when you if you if you run at somebody you with a sword it's they're gonna raise their shield i mean you can call it all indoctrination but there are some people who actually believe the state is legitimate not necessarily well, that's patriotism have... which is indoctrination no, it's not. It, I mean, it's more of a cultural thing. It's not like somebody uh, sat down and told little Johnny, you absolutely have to love America. Some of them really came about it, honestly, just mm -hmm. living in culture. Not like a study, just being in the well, culture. I guess I, I guess I could see that, but, I, I, but un, I, I also think that might run a little counter to the whole idea at least that you know many of others have put forth and i i tend to agree with that we're all kind of born anarchists i mean i guess culturally it, it can happen um but i i think a you know a good portion of the people went through the public indoctrination camps and you can't that's that's not necessarily culture that's just you're you're inundated okay. with this with this stuff that you can't Okay. You can't avoid, you know. The, the, you know, I mean, please. I, 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 we've talked to, I've talked to other people about this. When you, when you, when you do bring up the flag, and obviously, I can understand. And with military members, it would, it would not be a good thing to do. Um, but right. with the, the general public, when I do, you know, because I've thought back about it, and I can remember back as first grade, maybe even kindergarten, being told I had to do the Pledge of Allegiance. You know, at five or six <clears> years old, like that's pretty crazy. That's something that it just, it's, it's so, it's basically subliminal messaging, whether it was intended or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you, I you're reciting these words. You get you're reciting these words that you don't even know what they mean. You don't understand the concepts that they're that they're asking of you. But again, I, I can totally understand from the military standpoint. Although I was, <clears throat> I guess I'm not surprised, but I, a little bit the the Constitution angle that you're saying to stay away from that. But as you explain it, I guess it makes more sense to me, and, and that would cause me to most likely just hand people off to you because that's usually one of my first angles especially when it comes to constitutionalist tea party members um just in general you know that's usually my tactic because I, I i use i use the history angle that's that's usually my thing and i i like to go and point out the contradictions in the constitution but i i guess i, I guess that would infuriate them too much because they would you just at least for you, I, I don't want you to speak for other people. But you know, when you when you were in that mindset, if somebody had come to to, to, to uh, you with that, um, trying to point out the contradictions, would it have been more that you, because the because you believe the oath you gave, like is that is it that, or is it the actual constitution, the actual words, the actual what you think what you think it means based on what we've been taught it was interpreted to mean, you know, all that BS. But like for you, what do you think? I can't speak intelligently on it because I genuinely am a freak. It took somebody putting the liberty shot in my mouth to get it through okay. my head. That's okay. what. It, so I don't. I the first thing I do is I understand. <clears throat> I assume I'm the freak. When, when I was speaking to that, 
uh, if you just gave uh, people just this natural, if you were to look at a, at a group of people, you would naturally come out with statists at a smart no at a small number, and naturally come out with anarchists at a small number, and then everybody else would have some strange cultural thing in between. I understand the the indoctrination portion. I I, I agree. I I just think about it in the all of these humans are different, mm -hmm. and they all end up coming to a different conclusion. So some of them would naturally end up a statist, and some of them would naturally end up an anarchist, and the rest is that um, that affected portion mm -hmm. of the. You know, there's always an outlier in the data points, I, sure. and that's how I was thinking. So okay. I, I, I can see the point, not just saying there's usually that outlier data point that I I try not to discount as impossible, just unlikely. Gotcha. But yeah, because yeah, I mean, I guess shot the... guys, so so <laughs> don't don't Blunt. try what you would normally try with me because that and it really took and it was a military guy who was doing it, who hit me with that that blast. So. I was more receptive to the blast. I accepted it better. I can behave in a manner around somebody who's been in for 17 years differently than you can because mm -hmm. we've kind of kind of done that same shit. So I can say things that won't throw up a defensive thing as oh well he doesn't know. So yeah, it's that it's it is an <clears throat> it is an appeal to an authority <clears throat> when 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 someone when you go up and you say hey look you know this this and that and they're like. You, what the fuck do you know? Have you ever fired around for this government, or, or yep. have you ever, you know, yep. seen one of your brothers carried off with the flag? And we and it's, know it's an appeal to authority, but but telling him it's an appeal to authority will not have exactly, them. Yep, exactly, exactly. You know, you're no, you're right, you're right. So it's it's all about the talking to the elephant thing, and you know, you know, I, I it, it's it is it is you have you have to find that point of relation on a lot of people because we're an emo, we're emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. And people will generally accept uh, newer ideas or a change in their programming from someone that uh, kind of thinks along the same lines of them or had the same career, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, uh, you, you can find, well, this guy must know what he's talking about because you don't, you're not in the military for 17 years and then just go, well, fuck it. Like you're a lifer, you're going to retire out of the military and you're going to sit on your fucking couch till you die. Right. Why would you give all that up? Let me think. See, see, there's those biases. Almost everybody who gets out of the military doesn't go home and sit on the couch for the rest of their life. I was <laughs> being a second was, career. So no, I, I, you know, I think what he was saying. actually. I think he was actually joking with that one. <laughs> no, no, I was just. What, what kind I was of a just, little slack? <laughs> I was being semantical, but uh, yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying is is you got to find these this thing. You know, the last conversation I had with a guy, he was. Uh, uh, we were talking and he, I said, well, were you military? And he was like, because we, we were talking, I was showing him the thing about the 200,000 uh, vets have died waiting for VA care. And he and I said, he's like, wow, I'm a vet. And I'm like, really? And we just started talking. I didn't, I did not press him on anything. And I, and I asked him a few, I, fed, I asked him a few questions. I was like, you know, do you think it's kind of BS? Why we went to, you know, while we're doing all this stuff, do you think ISIS is real? Like the government is obviously funding them. And all this, and he was like, "Man, I didn't even think about that." But the, I, he, he said, "I swear they funded Al Qaeda." Hmm. He was like, "I don't even think Al Qaeda existed." Some things are pretty open, like you know, we've clearly at some point uh, given ISIS something. I can't tell you off the top of my head exactly what it was. I, I haven't done any analysis on any of it. I haven't looked at the reports, well, but I'll I know this, some, the, this... there are people who have trusted, decent news sources who really do their due diligence, one of them, one of which is Scott Horton, and, and he'll go on for hours and hours about this, and we have definitely given money to ISIS. Uh, as far as Al-Qaeda, I don't know. But either way, um, if he, just the whole emotional aspect of it, 200,000 200, vets died waiting for, um, for, for VA care, and that assumes that they weren't World War II vets who were already in their late 80s, and we're looking to have a corn removed. I mean, a lot of that is just emotionally driven yeah. bullshit headlines. And and it, there are legitimate problems with the system. And it, even if, it, let's assume that this system was being voluntarily paid for, this system has problems. This system would probably be out of business if it was voluntarily paid <laughs> yeah. for because it is that kind of a shit mess. But that number is extremely inflated and kind of ridiculous. And I, I try and stick to topics that 
really don't have a lot of room for debate anymore. That that when we're when not when we're overseas attacking somebody in their house, we are not defending anything. We are uh, aggressing and declaring somebody else's oil patch or strategic asset doesn't make any more sense than well, I'm fighting for freedom by kicking in some door in Afghanistan. It, it's ridiculous. I under, other people have oil, and we might have to pay more for it. A lot of people don't recognize the rest of the world pays three dollars a liter when we pay three dollars a gallon. We live on a military hegemony that is ushering in economic benefits, and. Uh, I don't really think it's about the economic benefits or the military um, might. I think it's really about the control of trying to control the entire planet. And all the outliers are being violently brought into the fold, be it be a war or well, a coup. The, the thing economic, it is... An economic war is kind of a real thing, so... The, well, yeah, almost the, the first two world wars were pre uh, pre uh, preceded by... Um, or preceded by... Uh, massive economic issues but uh you know it's like it, it's very hard situation because i mean somebody that hasn't invested so much of their their lifespan into something it's very hard to tell them that you did it all for a lie and, and for them oh, to it's accept easy to tell them it's hard for them to accept, accept it. that's what i meant that's yeah. what i was getting to it's, yeah. it's okay. when you tell them hey you know it's that's the hard point is trying to find that way to be like hey you know maybe just maybe this whole thing is a fucking game and you're being wrecked yep. by it. Yep. Henry Kissinger a long time ago said uh, military men are uh, dumb animals or something. Dumb like animals that. to yeah. be used as pawns. Yes. And, and you don't really want to admit that. It was really hard for me when I started making my conversion. I mean, I was a staff sergeant with 14 years, 15 years active duty, and I had five MOSs. Uh, an electronics technician. There ain't a whole lot of dumb electronics technicians running around. I was an intelligence analyst. You can find some dumb analysts, but I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, I worked with ordnance for a while uh, on a technical level. I, you know, don't don't let this blow up on you, kind of thing. There are. Um, I, I I was an infantryman. Uh, I know stuff. I'm not an idiot, but it's really hard to, especially the more you know, the more you know. Um, it's very difficult to tell you, hey, you got suckered by a lie. Mark, Mark Twain says, uh, "It's very. It, why is it? Or uh, it's easy to easier to convince somebody. It's easier to fool somebody than convince them they've been fooled." Been fooled, yes. And that and that's really what it is. You know, you fool, fooling people is easy, but convincing them they've been, they've been fooled is really hard. And it's hard to admit that, especially in certain circumstances where you put somebody down or something like that. And um, that that's really the kind of person. These are, I, I, I know, this is a bit of a subjective value judgment, but military people are the best people you can have in the liberty movement. Because when they say no, they will pick up a gun, they will toe the line, they will show up, and they will say no, this is, we're not going to let this happen, this is, a, a, this is principle. And they do that even if their principles are misguided. So if you can get that kind of same person to stand up and say no, based on principles for for objective principles that apply to everybody not just preferred cultural brainwashed you know the federal system gave us this idea principles they are they're in, in my humble loving opinion they are the best kind of folks that you can ever bring into the fold so i guess that's well yeah I, <laughs> well I, I i i guess i mean i would have to agree with that I, i've always I've always thought that ever since I, I started down this path too. That you know, I mean, you hear it said, and it's 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 said in a lot of circles too. Like even even the Tea Party circles, they always want to get the you know the military on their side because they're worried about you know they're you know they're always convinced that it's just the Democrats and it's you know they're going to ruin everything and they they need them to stand up. So you know, once as I as I I followed that progression because I went from you know I went from Democrat to Republican to conservative to Tea Party to Libertarian, and as I was along the way, I was thinking the same thing. And then when I finally reached anarchism, it was like, well, yeah, it makes sense. Having people like that on, quote unquote, our side is is definitely it has to be a good thing. It can't it can't hurt for one. Right. <laughs> Just definitely. the utilitarian standpoint, you're you're recruiting a bunch of Swiss Army knives. So yeah. that's a really good thing to have to have laying around. 
Yeah, I mean, do you want a whiny barista on your side or an operator? <laughs> and, and some of those whiny baristas do physics, so you know. Hey. I, like I said, it's a bit of a subjective value judgment, but the, the utility of people who will stand up and say no, you know, they will speak truth to power. Donald Trump has Donald Trump has one positive thing about him, only one. He will speak truth to power. Everything else, he's just a bullshit neocon. And he's no different than any of the other rest of the politicians. But he has one thing: he'll speak truth to power. And oh, no. Barry Sanders, <laughs> Barry Sanders will speak all the truth he knows to power. It's Bernie. it's almost no truth, but whatever he has, he'll speak. And uh, and the, then he's just a typical politician. I would rather that's be. That's why they're so popular right now. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. People are like, all right, if you're going to rape me, I'd rather you just tell me, hey, I'm going to rape you. Not this, hey, can I come in and have a drink? And then, bam, you get raped. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what politics is. Wow. And we, we just went Cosby. <laughs> no, just no, you, well, get, you I, get what I'm saying. It's I this, think... this the, 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 the con versus the, okay, I know what to expect, you know? Yeah, uh, it, better it's like the if, devil you know. Yeah, it's like uh, Donald Trump gets up there, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and if I don't, I'll quit. It's wow. like I can almost respect that because I know what I'm gonna get. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah like I would true. vote. I if back back when I was a hardcore Republican, like, you know, into it all, I was like I would vote for a Democrat over a Republican if a Democrat would just say I'm gonna come out and do this, this, and this. You look at Obama. He said I'm gonna go do this, this, and this. He's done the complete opposite of everything he comp campaigned on. So well, you look at what someone you look at what someone's saying in a political debate or while they're campaigning and bank on them doing the exact fucking opposite once they get in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, usually well that's why that's that's why I don't I mean a lot of people are on the Bernie bandwagon but I don't um, and it's just funny cuz you're the second person I heard today call him Barry instead of Bernie. Uh, <laughs> Did I? Uh, yeah. But it's okay. Barry Sanders. I, oh, okay. Yeah, I might have done that. Okay. Oops. It's all right. I meant it's Bernie. No, I, I know who you meant. It's just funny because I was listening to a podcast. Oh, I think it was Michael Fien actually. Yeah, 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 he's actually yeah, he's called him. Um, but I, I think he's a little different because he is just he's just talking crap because he's been in there long enough that he knows how the game is played. Trump, I think, can can speak truth to, to truth to power for now because yeah. he's always been just on the outside of this. I mean, he's benefited from government, you know, subsidies and whatever, and, you know, the system itself, because he's been able to build himself up and then just declare bankruptcy. I mean, how many times? Twice now, I think. And uh, still, and back, or three is it? And he's back up again to 10, 10, million, 10 billion plus. Um, so for now, I think he can. But once he, if, if he were to win, I mean, I, I don't see him actually winning the presidency, but if, if he were to get like in as a senator or something, I think he would turn the he would go full neocon because he would you know he what would I, the, I, he would realize I, the game. And... I see the Goldwater treatment happening to him, I, and, and this is a huge caveat. Sorry for this, but I, do do you remember how the Republicans treated Goldwater? Yeah, they they hate. Okay, him. then I don't know why you're shaking your head. So. No, I think no, no, it no. wasn't. No, I was shaking my head about something else. Oh. Um, well, no, I I think well. I would think I think maybe Rand Paul would get more of that treatment than Trump. Trump. Oh just, no, no, Rand Paul's not going to win. I no, I don't. I don't think he's going to win. I don't. But think like Trump's Trump... gonna Trump's gonna lead, and then they're gonna yeah. Trump's gonna lead. I, I guarantee you, Hillary's our next president. I I, <laughs> I almost want to bet money on it right now. Wait for the Scooby Doo ending because they already set up Trump to get killed by Go uh, El Chapo, and uh, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, hey, I mean it's already there. It's it's already there. So Trump get Trump's gonna get the Republican nomination, and then he's gonna get killed. And you know what the call is gonna be then? See this goddamn war on drugs. You wanted to legalize. Here we are. We need more draconian bullshit from the state. That's no no that's like gonna be the Scooby Doo ending. If you if, winning. if you were making money on like like CPS, like, this is a big thing I stress to state is like. The war on poverty, the war on child, like they're gonna find whatever they can to increase their budgets. The war on drugs, the war on drugs will never end. If the if the cartels just said, you know what, all this ain't worth it anymore, we quit, and all the people quit making drugs, said, you know what, government, you win. The government would like freak out because their boondoggle would end. Well, so, I, 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 I don't know about that. I, I think that's slowly drawing to a close, and I, I, I think I, even within the status paradigm, that'll finally collapse eventually. Um, but maybe we should get back on <laughs> back on yeah. point with the with so, the with the military. Um, so my biggest thing is 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 when I normally debate, especially online, or try to even talk, is is just phew, gates defensive. Even if I'm like completely way off, like not pushing any buttons, not doing anything, 
It's just straight up defensive. You know, if you don't like it, you can fucking move to Somalia. My brother died for that flag. You can die, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Stomp this flag, I'll stomp your ass. All the, It's just... Right. All they have is, is idioms, I guess, or whatever you would yeah, call that. Yeah, but, but I think all, all these things you're describing are, are uh, preceded by you saying something about those things. I think we're trying to, I think what Don No, 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 I've tried That's, both methods. Yes. Yeah. No, he, no it's, not, it's, not about method, it's not about their, it's not about their methods. What I was saying is, you know, I mean, as Donnie mentioned, you know, the, the don'ts earlier on, you know, don't talk about the flag at all. So if you're not talking about the flag, there's no reason for somebody to come back with the automatic answer. Somebody died, my so-and-so died for that flag. Um, you know, and I, I think, I mean, obviously, you said it earlier, Dave. On online is much different, but I, I, from what I'm getting from Donnie, at least, this this does seem like something that would, especially with the the military members themselves, would be something. Even if you're, if, even if you're not a former military, this is probably better one on one, you know, in person, yeah. where you can actually, because you know, with that rapport building, you were saying, the, um, the random internet man uh, is not going to go over well. I mean, and and military is no different in that sense that the the internet. You know, you kind of feel somewhat anonymous, and uh, you know you'll show a lot of people. They'll they'll show their ass way more than they would from the guy oh, who just bought them a beer. You know what I mean? So I I've actually have a real. You know what? I don't know what it is about beer, but it, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I, mean, I sat did you, down with did a you guy. See that Kokesh video the other day? No. You didn't see the Kokesh video? Like three Marines were like in his face. Like, do you want to step outside and all this? And he just. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw yeah. that and. And, and yeah, he did a very good job of relating to the target, not um, not engaging the guy in what he wanted to engage in, but explaining his own point and saying, look, it's I'm, I'm not here to step on your nuts. I'm really here to say, I think this, there, there are some very important things that need to be questioned here, and especially the things that we're told we're not allowed to question. Those are the things that really need to be questioned because they are, uh, you know, questionable premises that this doesn't seem to make sense you know a lot of people can't stand the idea uh, somebody posted an, an article the other day about uh, does the Constitution allow any to, to ban anything and of course the argument was on uh, drugs or guns and you know there were a couple examples of prohibitions that have come even though the Constitution doesn't really give specifically doesn't give yes. Congress the, the answer to, to that ban is yes anything. But, but in, re in reality, the entire Constitution is a series of prohibitions. Who can make law? Not you. Not you. <laughs> you are prohibited from making law. Who can collect taxes? Not you. So, I mean, when you start reading it in that aspect, you really look at the philosophical difference of if all humans are created equal, why is this group preferred? I, I understand there's a difference between organization and not being in the organization but this organization is forced on everybody and it comes with all of these prohibitions so the fact that eventually it just gets manipulated to have more prohibitions of this preferred group and they're the ones who do all the interpreting so of course they interpret it in their favor and then they're the ones who enforce it so they enforce it how they see fit it, it all makes sense if you look at the constitution as a list of prohibitions that are all about not you well, yeah, and that's a big thing I tell people is everything the government does is constitutional. Who interprets the Constitution? There's only one thing that does. Um, yeah. As a rule, it, yeah, I, I think there's some things that even like you can sit there, you can sit at the castle gates and bitch all you want. Yeah. But but the king writes the law, and if he breaks that law, he can change the fucking law. Uh, yeah, yeah, and so, essentially that's the inherent moral hazard of a constitution. It's not that the constitution is. Uh, it's a good look in it's a it's a, a lesson in human understanding but it's not a huge leap forward in the concept of governance because the concept of governance is inherently broken it creates preferred groups of people and and lays the foundation of moral hazard before they act before they act they have this moral quote authority to go and do things that you can't do if you so, can't collect taxes but the, but the government can why is that and that's because well, it's because just, we uh, gave him that power, duh. Right. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not you had the authority to delegate that power, because you can't tax, so you can't delegate it, and and now we're in Larkin territory. Yeah, yeah. He does. But no, 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 no. So you were saying you 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 sat down with somebody the other day. Oh, and he was a left guy. 
he was at okay. we, the con the the talk was about uh global warming and he makes his money he worked for the state of texas and uh he was all about global warming being a thing and he thought he was sitting down to talk with just another denier and by the time that was over he was a skeptic but it, i had to buy him three pints of beer i didn't have to but i lubricated that conversation with three pints of beer and all of a sudden he set his expectations were oh my god this guy doesn't know nothing about science and when he sat down, when, you know, when he got up, it was, oh, my God, I don't know nothing about consistency or philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a whole, it, it was a really good talk. And then he moved to New Zealand on me. So oh. I, I haven't talked to him in a while. You didn't but, even record it. Shame on you. Oh, no, we went out. No, no, no. I don't do that. It, it was, we, uh, no, he moved to New Zealand now. Yeah. We were having a beer down here in Austin. No, no, so, no, no, no. So, I was, but I was it was a really a good though. talk. And, uh. <laughs> You know, beer, it's an amazing lubricant. That, that's how that started 10 minutes ago. But, yeah, beer, amazing lubricant. Uh, very much let somebody know you are – we are not adversaries. Drink drink a beer with me. And, and it, I think it's a really good, you know, icebreaker. So. Yeah, you yeah. got to tear down some walls to start building new ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I kind of miss beer. I haven't had one in almost two years at this point. <laughs> I haven't had a beer in like three months and it's killing me. I have some in the fridge and it's just I want to go crack one open after all of this yeah, copious I'm, amount of beer talking. I'm going to go have one. Just because <laughs> the, all of hearing of all of the not beer drinking has made me depressed and I must have a beer. Well, I'm down like 12 pounds, so you can oh. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. I used to drink uh, almost every day. Uh, well, every day. And, uh,. I lost 30 pounds just by – the only thing I changed in my diet was alcohol. I stopped drinking whiskey and beer every day, and it was amazing. <clears throat> well, that'll do it. Um, what did you say on here? What, wrap that? it? No. What's that, Dave? Yeah, well, I guess we can wrap it up. Uh, yeah. Is there anything uh, you want to say? Like uh, people can reach you out on Twitter. Any military wants to talk to you, how can they reach you, Donnie? Um, you can go see the Seeds of Liberty. Um, I'm on Twitter, but I don't I don't check Twitter too often. But I'm on Facebook, and we have you know, a group. We have a group, right? Yeah, the Seeds of Liberty group, and uh, I do the Force the Freedom podcast. So if uh, anybody just wants to throw rocks at me, or uh, you're in Austin, you'd like to have a beer, or um, if you think, okay, you goddamn anarchists, you know, you're you're fucking up my constitution. I uh, I understand why. Uh, military people would not want to talk to maybe Dave or Jeremy, but I am available. So, uh, if you want to come on this the, on the Force to Freedom podcast, we can arrange it. Send us an sure. email at questions dot seeds of liberty at gmail dot com, or or tweet us, or get in the group and say, "Hey, I want to get in and discuss X being anything with Donnie yep. and Lloyd on the show, and we'll set it up. All you need is a microphone, yep, and there. Skype." Very open, very open about the whole thing. Um, I don't think you're an asshole. I think there's problems that need to be discussed. Very serious problems. Not not uh, bashing on anybody or anything like that. Just a serious conversation. That's pretty much all I do. I don't bring my feelings into it. There, there are some things that are just flat out on, they, they don't make any sense. You know, enforcing certain ideas with violence is okay. You know, self-defense and property and these things where someone is trying to aggress upon you, there's nothing inherently wrong with violence because if there is, you can't kick your rapist. Hmm. But but there is uh, a lot of things that should not be a force of violence that are being a force of violence. And, and some of those ideas we grew up with and and uh, it's not, it's, you know, for the guy, the skeptical military guy out there, it's not what you think. You think that this talk is going to be a bunch of leftist commie pinko bullshit. And I got news for you. That's how I thought it was, and I was hmm. dead goddamn wrong. And, yeah. Uh, amongst my group of friends, I'm I'm pretty smart. I'm not the dumb guy. I'm not being led around by the nose. So don't go thinking I just I fell for the communist uh, manifesto bullshit, and I suddenly got on the the pinko bandwagon. I, I'm not that guy. We're like the opposite. You know, it's it, that's why when I get called a liberal or a commie by anybody, I go, "You have more in common than with the liberal and the commie than I do." <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. what I tell them. I'm like, look, you as a Republican, as a right winger, or whatever, or vice versa, have more in common with that person than you they do with me because y'all over here 
and I'm way over here. Y'all are on y'all are on Venus. I'm on fucking Mercury. Okay, we're not even in the same area code. Yep, I, so. I have seen people dismiss the ideas of libertarianism based on quote you know pinko kami bullshit. So it, it really isn't. But you know, I understand why someone would come from that way. I understand. And, and honestly, I'm not saying the military are all the same people, but there's a there's a pattern there. There's a kind of a cookie cutter mold that a lot of these things are fairly easily debunked, but they're they're in there. They're dug in like a tick, so you kind of got to take time to get that tick out and uh, and draw out the curiosity in people and say, hey, look, this is this is reality, and and this is why believing X is harmful, and this is why believing Y is harmful. But when you look at it from not a state of belief, this is why it's probably best to change this position and and uh, way more people in the military than any anarchist you know that the I never spent the day in the military I, the 16 year old I've been an anarchist my whole life those people really don't understand how many allies are this far away from becoming a libertarian slash voluntary slash anarchist they, they just don't understand how many people are in the military they're too busy calling them baby killers and welfare whores and it's it's kind of depressing. You see perfectly fertile opportunities just being wasted on somebody's air. Plant seeds. <laughs> yep. So what's uh, your favorite quote, Donnie, and then we'll wrap it up. From what? Period. Well, from a, the military perspective, the whole uh, war is a racket thing by Spendley Butler is is really that'll speak to a lot of military people because when a general of the Marine Corps who's fought wars on four continents says war is a racket, it's bullshit, you don't understand what it actually is, um, it's a really good good thing to read. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know about person personally, I like the uh, just stuff from Einstein. Um, I, I tweeted out a, a picture of Einstein and said uh, you can't use the same thinking that to solve a problem that you use to create it and that is the authoritarian dog chasing its tail all day long you, you can't you know oh well the problem like is we, we must give up smash on this idea. and the problem will go away but mm -hmm. at no point no matter what the problem is it's always well that's the, that's the argument for every continuation of a boondog oh we've already spent this much money or we've we've sacrificed this many troops or so many DEA agents have died trying to do, you know it's like you can't give up now <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't fix the problem right you just fucked up and had a bad decision you have to pay for that bad decision yep speaking you, you to keeps, the elephant that's you keep how you, get people you keep on. you keep sailing in the wrong direction you know eventually you'll get back to where you were i guess but uh, it, it's your best your best bet is to turn around yeah, well. Right, or your best bet is to not get involved and not use the Gulf of Tonkin to get 68,000 guys killed. <laughs> An know. untold number of Vietnamese. And... Right, and and we really didn't need to be in World War One or World War Two. Like, we didn't really need to be in any of those things. We, 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 we. <laughs> uh, yes. You, you, the, the, you the owe, people of, the people you of this landmass. I wasn't alive then, but... Right. I was going to say, I wasn't anywhere near any of those. But... Yeah, so... Yeah, but... Again, those, I mean, th those are all things, unfortunately, that uh, according to your list, we're not supposed to mention in the first place. So <laughs> I don't think, I, I guess bringing up the Gulf of Tonkin to a lot of military members. The Gulf the of effect. Tonkin was a, what, was a I, false flag. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> that was my I, Ventura. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You, you were much better at that when you weren't sick, Dave. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I was governor of Minnesota. <laughs> the Gulf there of Tonkin. All right. Jet fuel can't melt steel beams. <laughs> All right. Before we get off on too many tangents here, um, I, I, I think we were going to wrap it up. Uh, so, Donnie, thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, as you know, as Dave and Donnie both mentioned, you know, you can find Donnie at the Force Freedom. New shows come out every Wednesday usually. Um, seek you know, seek him out, especially for. I, I do know we've we've come across a couple of people. Uh, especially recently, who found our podcast by listening to to uh, 
to the force to free him and not realizing we were connected and I, we, we kind of shoved them back in your direction and said here here you go talk to these guys <laughs> um so yeah donnie and i know lloyd is too now that he's starting to get settled back in in his new place i think we've um, kind of worked the bugs out on that show i mean yeah. we're, we're getting there no yeah. but i was just saying both of them are both guys are very open to to discussing um just be prepared for the logic train to hit you um because i know <laughs> both of you both of you guys i kind of I, I actually i bow down to both of you in certain conversations because once once both of you start get going i'm just like i can't even i can't even keep up i'm just gonna sit here with the popcorn and watch um <laughs> but uh so yeah so uh you know th thanks again for coming on our show uh you know any questions guys you know hopefully you enjoyed this uh maybe maybe you learned something uh seek us out seek us out on uh, facebook or youtube uh, all of our content can be found at theseedsofliberty.com. And uh, Dave, donation push this week. Or are you good? <laughs> you know what? If you don't have money to donate to our Bitcoin or um, our Patreon account, click share whenever you see our stuff on social media or click retweet. Yeah. That That's worth more because it, it costs a lot to, to pay for that stuff to happen. And, uh, we, you know, that's – I can show you the uh, the scene – on Facebook on when no one shares a post on the, on the, our podcast page and versus when four people share it, it goes from like maybe a hundred people seeing it to like 4,000 people seeing it. And that is awesome for us. That means 4,000 eyes are seeing the message of Liberty. Yep. Yeah. You know, exactly. That's, that's not a hard number. That's just, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I really appreciate Donnie coming on to, uh, talk about something that he's very passionate about and, uh, really thank Jeremy for not wearing his backwards, uh, NFL hat tonight, <laughs> and I, I missed Danilo. <laughs> Admit it, Dave. It's not the fact that it's a backwards hat; it's the fact that it's a Cowboys hat. <laughs> no, no, I have nothing against the Cowboys. I just, I am, I, uh, if if I could get the government to ban anything, it would be backwards baseball caps. So, uh, um, uh, all right. Well, I we, I we all this... have our pet ban, right? <laughs> I, I, I have, I have. No, Dave. I don't, I don't want to no, ban no. anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. You sure you don't want to ban people in New York from walking their own dogs? No. Nope, Come on. No, no. Take the ring. No. no. I, I want to continue. No. Coming, I want to continue coming across my clientele, honestly. <laughs> um, but before oh. we get off into that tangent. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, again, you can find our stuff on the Uh This has this was episode 22. I know I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Um, but uh, next week we'll have Danilo back. Not sure who we're going to have on, uh, but uh, should be should prove to be interesting. All right. So everybody, have a good night, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>